I really wanted to like this keyboard. Look, this is gonna be a bit of a weird video because normally I make videos talking about upping the production value of your live streams and streaming gear. And honestly, your keyboard is less important in terms of streaming gear compared to things like your microphone, your camera, your lighting. But every streamer needs a keyboard and this one is pretty interesting. It was sent to me by a company called Mountain. It's called the Mountain Everest Max. It's got some pretty interesting features. The numpad can either be attached to the left or the right of the keyboard. The switches are hot swappable so you can put whatever switches you want but what I was really most interested in were the four little LED buttons on top of the numpad. Now, I wouldn't blame you if you thought these acted a little bit like another similar product. Yeah, nope. Don't get me wrong. This isn't horrible. It's actually pretty decent. But what I was really hoping to be the perfect keyboard for streamers turned out to be really not that much different from any of the other gaming brands that are out there already. And while these screens do support OBS controls, these might be one of the most bizarre and perplexing implementations I've ever seen on a product before. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help you learn how to make your content better. If you're like me and you make YouTube videos, well good because they cover a ton of topics from film and video to graphic design, which you can use to learn how to edit your videos. I talked about this before, but they have a class from MKPHD on scripting, shooting, and editing your videos. And he goes through the whole process that he goes through to make his YouTube videos. You wanna know the best thing that I learned from him? The first 10 seconds of your YouTube video are the most important. You wanna know how I know? I really wanted to like this keyboard. Yeah, you're welcome. None of the videos have any ads, so if you'd like to join Skillshare, click in the link down below and the first 1,000 of you will get a one month free trial. And after that, it's just $10 a month for an annual subscription. Okay, so before I get on with my thoughts, you should know that when it comes to keyboards, I am a crazy person. I've built like five custom mechanical keyboards before. I've literally spent thousands of dollars on keyboards. It's a stupid hobby. Don't get into it. Save yourself before it's too late. But because I'm into custom mechanical keyboards and I love streaming, I think that gives me a pretty unique perspective when it comes to the Mountain Everest. So for me, my top priority when it comes to choosing a keyboard is number one, above everything, it needs to be as quiet as possible or at least not sound annoying because I don't want the tapping of my keyboard to get picked up in my microphone while I'm streaming. And two, I wanna have some functionality for controlling my live stream, like changing scenes or controlling my audio. So having controls for that built onto my keyboard is a big plus. Now, I don't wanna bore you by reading the feature list that's on the box for like 20 minutes. There's already like a dozen other videos that do that, but I'll go through the important ones so you can quickly get up to speed with what we're looking at today. So the Mountain Everest is a full-size keyboard Keyboard, you get your function row, you get your number pad. It's a big keyboard. Now the cool thing is the numpad is actually removable and the sides of the keyboard have these little USB-C ports. So you can actually put the numpad on either the left or the right of the keyboard. It also has this removable media dock, which you could put on either the top right or the top left of your keyboard. And you can use this to control things like your music. And then the last feature, which I'm sure is the reason why you clicked on this video to begin with, the four little LED buttons on top of the numpad. All right, so where do I begin with my thoughts? Let's start with the switches. So the keyboard comes with genuine Cherry MX switches. So you get your blues, your browns, your reds, your silent reds. And Cherry has a reputation for being the best switches that you can have in a gaming keyboard. This is why every single gaming brand advertises having genuine Cherry switches as a feature. But if you know anything about custom mechanical keyboards, you'll know that Cherry switches are really loud, they're scratchy, and they ping really bad. So I wanted to make this keyboard quieter so it sounds less annoying on my live streams. And thankfully, the switches are actually hot swappable. So in theory, I could swap out those loud, annoying Cherry MX switches in the keyboard and swap them out for something much quieter like these silent Duroc Dolphin switches. I bought these off AliExpress because everybody knows that the good shit comes from some obscure, weird AliExpress seller that you don't understand. And these Dolphin switches are insanely switched and incredibly quiet. It's actually unreal how quiet these switches are.
So yeah, these Duroc switches, so much better for streaming. They don't make any noise. It's not going to be distracting at all. But this is where it gets bad for the Mountain Everest. The hot swap sockets on the Mountain Everest only support three pin switches. And these dolphin switches are five pin. They've got these extra little plastic legs, which means these switches are not compatible unless I clip these little plastic legs off. And I wasn't gonna do that because these switches are super expensive. Now I could have just got the keyboard with silent red switches to begin with, but I don't like silent red switches. And for a keyboard that advertises hot swap sockets as a feature, I think it's really important that it actually supports five pin switches since basically all of the good mechanical key switches are five pin. Let's talk about the stabilizers. So if you don't know what stabilizers are, they're basically a long wire that is used to stabilize the long keys on your keyboard, like spacebar and your shift key. And this is actually really important because one of the biggest culprits for bad acoustics in a keyboard is the quality of the stabilizers. If you're watching this right now and you have a mechanical keyboard, I want you to tap on your spacebar right now. And if your spacebar sounds like this, then you have terrible stabilizers. Mountain attempted to address this issue of rattly stabilizers by hand lubing all of their stabilizers and adding a little piece of rubber underneath the spacebar. And to their credit, they actually did a pretty good job because these might be some of the best stabilizers that I've seen in one of these gaming branded keyboards. I just want to point out that I watched the Linus video on the Mountain Everest and he said in the video that the stabilizers are clipped. And the spacebar stabilizer is clipped to all but eliminate reverb or chatter. I actually opened up the keyboard to check and they're definitely not clipped, but they're still pretty good. Quick little edit here, I actually spent the last two days modding the Everest just for fun. I'll list all the mods I did on screen here, but I basically just lubed all the switches and I managed to get a pretty decent sound coming out of this thing. I got rid of the ping altogether and I think it actually sounds pretty great now. Next, I want to talk about the keycaps and they're fine, I guess. On the plus side, they're keycaps, which is a good thing. I mean, they don't look horrible. They don't use that stupid gamer font that they were using all the way through the 2000s. For one, the keycaps are super thin, but worst of all, the keycaps are laser etched. Basically, if you don't know what that means, they took a laser and they literally etched the legend into the coating of the keycap. That's gonna fade over time. That's why if you've used any of those old Razer keyboards before and you've seen the legends like chip away, it's because they're using laser etched keycaps. I think for a keyboard that costs as much as this does, it really should have come with double shot keycaps. So double shot means that the legend is actually a separate piece of plastic compared to the rest of the keycap. And what that means is the legend is printed all the way through the thickness of the keycap. So no matter how much you press your W, A, S, and D keys, the legend will never fade away. Thankfully, the keyboard uses a completely standard layout. So swapping out the keycaps for something much more durable should be pretty easy, right? All right, so I'm about to complain about something that's gonna make you guys be like, Nutty, you're a crazy person. Like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I know, I already told you that. Were you not paying attention? The sockets that are used on the Mountain Everest are in a north facing orientation, which means that the LED is in the north part of the socket compared to a south facing orientation where the LED is in the south side of the socket. I promise you there's a difference between these two things. Just don't don't click away from the video. I bought a set from Enjoy PBT and if you look at the side profile of the keycap, it's got a short profile. This is called 
cherry profile. With a north facing key switch, these cherry profile switches are so short that they actually collide with the housing of the switch and it creates this really plasticky sound. It doesn't feel good. It just, it's, it's not good. But if you were to flip the socket upside down in a south facing orientation, then these keycaps work properly. It doesn't collide with the housing at all. This is why keyboards like the GMMK Pro or the Keychron Q1 use south facing sockets. It's to get around this issue where the keycap is colliding with the housing. It may seem like I'm nitpicking and to be fair, I totally am, but I think it's worth pointing out because the keycaps on this keyboard are not very good. You're probably gonna wanna replace them in the future and all of the popular keycap sets out there are cherry profiles. So if they're not gonna work quite perfectly with this keyboard, I do think it's fair to point out. All right, so I know we're like 10 minutes in this video. So raise your hand if you're like, Nutty, I don't care about any of this. I just wanna know about these LED buttons. Look, the reason I didn't talk so much about these buttons is because there's not much to talk about. They don't really do a lot. So much like every other gaming brand keyboard from Corsair, Razer, Glorious, this keyboard comes with its own software called Basecamp. And before Mountain sent me the keyboard, they told me that Basecamp supports OBS controls. So me being a streamer was super excited. I was like, hell yeah, sign me up for that. And the OBS implementation, I can't stress how disappointed I was. First of all, it's lacking the most basic OBS controls that you can think of. So you can't toggle sources, you can't toggle filters, no adjusting of volume for audio sources. Guys, I'm not even joking. You can't even change scenes with the software. It only allows you to go to the next scene and the previous scene. Unless I'm high as fuck, which I might be. I, I just, I could not for the life of me find those options. This is where it gets really bizarre because some of the OBS functions that it does support are fairly advanced. Like you can change the duration of your transitions inside of OBS, which is something that most people aren't gonna wanna do. You're only gonna wanna do that if you're really familiar with OBS. So the fact that it supports that, but you can't even change scenes is really weird to me. If I were to rate the OBS support for this keyboard, I would literally give it a one out of 10. It's, it's that abysmal. I can't imagine any streamer buying this keyboard to use the OBS controls. They're just so lackluster. And it doesn't stop there because if you're a streamer, like you probably want to control things beyond just OBS too. Like you might want to have a button that posts to Twitter or have some buttons that control your Discord audio or there's, there's so many other things that streamers can use with these buttons other than just controlling OBS and Basecamp just doesn't have any of that either. Now, to be fair to Mountain, they never advertise this keyboard for streamers, but I think if you're gonna go through the effort to add OBS support for your keyboard, I think you need to demonstrate a basic understanding of what streamers actually want for their keyboard <laughs> before shipping out the product, because I can't imagine any streamer using any of the functions that they have on this keyboard. Now, I guess it's entirely possible that Mountain is already planning to add an update for all these OBS functions, but you should know that I've had the keyboard for six months now, and from when I received the keyboard six months ago to now, I haven't seen any new OBS functions added through any of the software updates. So take that for what it's worth. Mountain, if you're listening, which I don't know if you are, but if you are listening, I highly suggest that you take a second look at the OBS functions. You should at least be able to change scenes and toggle sources and adjust your audio. But more than anything, I think you should actually talk to streamers and ask them what they actually want before you push out a software update. Anyway, uh, I feel like a goddamn savage right now, but like, I'm just very passionate about my keyboards. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys need any help with streaming stuff, have any questions, make sure to join the Discord. Also, I stream on Twitch three nights a week, so come watch me there. I'm probably gonna be talking about keyboards at some point because I have so many of them, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the live stream. Check me out there. And um, I'm just gonna sit here for a while while the video ends.